There are three scenarios if you are watching this video. Either I sent you this link and you are playing in one of my games, or you happen upon this randomly. Either way, here is a comprehensive breakdown of my D&D world known as Amashas, a diverse place that is generally medieval with a few cities, rather by arcane or technological means more advanced than others. There will be four parts to this. A brief history of the world, an overview of each nation in this world, looking at the pantheon of gods in this world, and lastly, a deep dive into each of the five nations and the cities in them. In the beginning, there existed a world, a continent, with only plants and animals on it. The pantheon of gods, by whatever means, came across this world and made intelligent life and put it on this continent. In the beginning of people, there were not very many nations or empires, just a few scattered settlements that would eventually evolve into the cities that we see today. After a few hundred years, there formed two major factions. The Grung Empire, which was a growing group of Grungs who took over the northwestern hemisphere of the continent, which would be now considered the Glorian Empire. In the southeast, there was the Sylvan Empire, run by a large family of elves who took the southwestern area, which would now be the Peninsula Alliance and the Lionette Republic. After about a hundred years of these two empires coexisting, a small town south of the Grung Empire started expanding and claiming other cities in a nearby area as their holy domain, domain to the Glorian Empire, which shortly formed thereafter, going to war with both the Grung Empire and the Sylvan Empire. The Glorian Empire then took over the entire Western Hemisphere and drove the Sylvan Empire back to the East. Around this time, uh, the Lionette Republic formed and managed to push back both the Glorian Empire and the Sylvan Empire. The Elves were drove to near extinction. After the Lionette Republic and the Glorian Empire existed for about 300 years, a rebellion started in the Glorian Empire, and that would eventually become the Bomic Conclave. They warred with each other for about 50 years until Gore, the god of unity, erected the Gorgon Range to divide the Glorian Empire and the Bomic Conclave, ending the war temporarily. The most common races that exist on this world are humans, dwarves, halflings, and asimars. Elves used to be common until losing two wars, and now they only live in a single city. All other races, however, are more spread out across the entire world. While it's more common to see a human in the Lion at Republic, it's not uncommon to see an Asimar. Next, we're going to look at the large pantheon of gods, which consists of four major gods and many smaller gods. The major gods are Gloria, the Crusader, believes that the only way to salvation is through her, and anyone who does not is doomed to the Nine Hells. Tells her followers to convert as many people as you can by any means necessary, and to kill those who drag people away from her. She has about three million followers, uh, and she has a symbol of a crusading angel. Grace, the loving mother runs counter to her sister Gloria and promotes individuality and redemption. Tired of the childishness of the other gods and says to put religion third between yourself and your loved ones. She has about one and a half million followers and her symbol is a dove. Gore, the stone forger, god of the earth, encourages community within one's town and opposes war wants progress and efficient people, created the mountains between the Glorian Empire and the Bama Conclave to cease their bickering. He went into a slumber, having used almost all of his powers, and is waking for the first time in a hundred years very shortly. His sign is a hammer, and has about 1.4 million followers. Thespia, the queen of fun, a god for bards, promotes having fun above all else. Life is misery if you're not entertained. Devout people build theaters for her. Has about a million followers, uh, and her holy symbol is a masquerade. Now let's take a look at the minor gods. The Everflame. It is an unknown god. A god 
uh, who contacts people and tells them to commit public atrocities. It has very few followers, and its symbol is a blue flame. Nil, the indifferent god, has almost no followers, doesn't care about being a god, sits by himself, and doesn't interact with the world. Its holy symbol is the outline of a castle. Punisher, the sadist. He encourages people to kill by promising that people who kill 30 people invoking his name will damn them to his circle of hell, and the person who killed them will torture them with him for, a f for eternity, followed by about 10,000 people. Its symbol is a whip. The great shark, the god of water, the biggest of the minor gods, he controls the seas, teaching karma. The more good you put into the world, the more good you get out. He also says that life comes in tides, so you will suffer and then you will flourish. He believes that rich people don't need to be rich. He has about 600,000 followers, and his sole holy symbol is a shark. Animus, the beast master. She believes in Darwinism, and believes that the weak will die and the strong will survive. Has about 100,000 followers, and its holy symbol is bared teeth of a dog. Minus, the minimalist god, believes in a passive life where you use as little as possible. Many followers spend hours meditating, sleep on the floor, and tend to have very little immaterial possessions. Dislike dragons and other hoarding creatures, churches pop up about everywhere and its followers are scattered. Churches, however, are small little shrines, if anything. About 200,000 followers and its symbol is a simple minus symbol. Gorge, the god of greed, tells followers to take the world back for him, as he believes it all belongs to him. He promises riches and power in exchange for loyalty. 100,000 followers. And its symbol is an open chest filled with gold. Numero, the number god, believes in concrete math, things like the left brain would do. Logically works things out. Has about 50,000 followers, and its symbol is an infinity symbol. Reed, the lore keeper, believes in the importance of keeping track of the world history. Her followers build museums uh, in her honor to preserve history. About 200, 200 sorry, 20,000 followers, uh, and her sign is a dripping quill. Tiamat, it's Tiamat. Okay, cool. Ego, the individualist. A god who promotes individuality and moral relativity, believes that its followers should do what they think is right all of the time and should not listen to other people as they are untrustworthy. He is in a losing fight with Gloria. He has about 50,000 followers and is losing more by the day. His symbol is the outline of the follower. It doesn't have like a universal symbol, it's your own outline. Gobble, the conqueror thinks that he is the best god, and that the world should be taken for him. He believes that warfare is art and is beautiful. It has about 100,000 followers, and its symbol is a morning star. Lyra. Lyra is a god who tells people that lying is more interesting and more fun than telling the truth. So their followers don't even tell the truth about the faces that they use. They wear masks. Uh, her symbol, is a mist-filled triangle. The current nations are as follows. The Glorian Empire. The Glorian Empire is a theocracy run by the religion Gloria to the god Gloria. This empire has a very simple motive. They believe that you need to follow their religion in order to reach true salvation. So they do whatever it takes to get the most people in their religion as possible. And if that means they have to kill the ox obstacles in their way, they have no qualms with that. The only religions that are legal within this empire is to the god Gloria and her sister Grace. The population of the Glorian Empire consists of mostly Asimars, making up about 60% of the population. The Bamak Conclave. The Bamak Conclave is an anti-religious state. They believe that the only reason gods want followers is to gain power and believe that gods are inherently predatory and evil. They have a very strong central government run by a single leader. 
Your goal is to kill all of the gods and work towards that single goal at maximum efficiency. The Bombic Conclave has a very large working class of primarily miners with a very, very small elite that exists within the government. The government selects people with rationed food and decides where they live and what they do for work. There exists a high population of dwarves in the Bombic Conclave, about 70% of the population, uh, with other races scattered about. The Lionet Republic is a representative democracy. There is one senate in the capital that decides all of the nation's laws, and it's comprised of members of each city, proportional to that city's population. It is very rare that any change happens within the government, as rarely a law can reach the majority vote, and the process of getting a law to be voted on is very long and complicated. Most people don't understand how the government works, however this isn't super important as there are not very many national laws, and most laws within the Lionet Republic are determined based on which city you win. The Lionet Republic is the most diverse empire, com comprising of about 40% human and a large amount of other races from all around the world. The, Pen the Peninsula Alliance, at first, was three city-states. Nomengrad, the city of technological advancement, with a high population of gnomes. Exempri, the entertainment capital of the entire world. It has lots of fine art uh, and other types of entertainment that draw in a lot of tourism. And then Willowgeist, the last remaining vestige of the once great Sylvan Empire comprised entirely of elves. These three nations decided to combine their army when the nations to the west of them started to form larger governments. So they made an alliance and combined their militaries together to make sure that they were safe from invasion. And lastly, the United Isles. The United Isles is a series of 22 different islands, all to the northeast of the main continent. Each of these islands are either uninhabited or run by their own set of rules with their own government. The only uniting force between these islands is an orcish naval military that has inhabited uh, the islands and makes the inhabitants of those islands uh, pay taxes to them so that they can protect them from outsized forces like other countries. The Glorian Empire. Uh, the capital city for the Glorian Empire is Holy Gloria. This city is a huge metropolis devoted to the politics of the nations with dozens of churches, all to either Gloria or Grace. Huge murals are made to this god. This is where the four prophets live, the four people who run the government and take direct inputs from Gloria. Port Blanco is a military port with a strong tourist presence from its strange paced white beaches. This city used to be close to the Bombic Conclave and is getting ready for war because of that. Grungia, uh, the previous castle of the Grung Empire, an empire who took non-citizens and enslaved them. After losing the war and their gods slain, the city felt ruined. A near ghost town, with very few people who still live here. Siabo is a city that has a rich natural oil supply, uh, which is the main export of the city. This city has a strong elite presence with a middle class with very little poverty. Diamona exports its rare gems that are found and sold. This place is much smaller than any other city in the Glorian Empire outside of Grungia, with a very small town vibe. Saint Juan, a large farming city that mainly exports corn and wheat, which is common diet in the whole empire, there, though there is some diversity due to a thriving farmer's market. Port Guapo is a port town that has easy access to the United Isles and is a small beach town vibe with a thriving port that has dozens of ships come and go each day with a variety of goods. And lastly, Esteban is a trade city that accesses land goods uh, with the rest of the world, mainly the Lionet Republic. This city has a criminal underbelly that steals from traveling merchants that pass through the city. The capital, called Bami, is the home of the prime captain Rock Ironheart, the dwarvish dictator who has ruled for the past 300 years. This city is a fortified castle for the people in the government. It's a military capital as well as a legal and economic capital for the entire Bombic Conclave. The Greska Row is where you most likely live if you live in the Bombic Conclave. It's held like a prison where you work 10-hour days in the mines and are fed less than great food. 
you have your own room and can socialize with other people, but you're not given full rights. This is where the mines are in the side of the Gorgon Range, exporting almost every material that you can get from the earth. This is a timberless society, so if you live there, you either live in a mined out cave or your house is made of metal. Watshai, this city is where the food is made, mainly rice. Uh, there is better living conditions here, but similar to Greska, you are forced to work by the government. Voskar is the closest thing to a normal town in the Bama Conclave with a self-contained ecosystem. Mainly used as a trade town, uh, usually most travelers won't go any further than Voskar when trading, and it's only used uh, for trading. Next is the Lionette Republic. The capital of the Lionette Republic is Stromenheim, a bustling city located at the Stroman River, divided into three districts, the government, trade and business, and tourism. By far the largest city in the world with a population of nearly a million. Pingo is a small town with a very strange export, that being various gems that are said to have magical properties and are sold for very, very high prices. Most people think it's a scam, uh, and a lot of business wants to capitalize on that. Mount Mithra is the primary source of mithril for the entire world, a very rare metal that can be used for a lot of different things. The city has a very clear elite, middle, and lower class. The city itself is not made out of wood, but rather it's carved into the side of a mountain. Myersville is the farming capital of the Lionette Republic. It exports a variety of crops to all around the world. While it used to be inherited primarily by small farmers, large elite companies are running these small farms out of business, causing a growing lower class and a very rich elite class. Port Cutlass is the most active port town in the entire world. With direct access to Wheel of Fortune, uh, a lot of people choose to go across during the weekends uh, or come to this city to go to Wheel of Fortune to gamble uh, and entertain themselves. Otherwise, it's a pretty normal city with high diversity. Meldore is a trade town that is a crossroads between the Mount Mithra and Stromenheim and the Bamak Conclave. It has a lower population, uh, but definitely prots off a high level of travel that comes through there. Dominitri is a struggling township that used to be an economy based off of the high frequency of gold found in the nearby river, which over the past 50 years uh, has run out of its gold supply. There is not much of a government uh, here, more of one sheriff, and the town has a suspiciously high number of missing people. Nuremberg is a town that its main expert is rock salt. It is a very vast salt mine underneath Nurem Lake. Because of this, the lake is almost entirely salt water. So it also exports rare fr fish that were freshwater fish and have slowly adapted to a salt water lake over thousands of years. It also hosts an annual sports festival that draws in a lot of tourism. Port Fallon is a struggling port town that is unable to keep up with the business that Port Cutlass has. The people who live there are in much more of a tight-knit community and are hostile towards outsiders, which they don't see nearly as much anymore. The Peninsula Alliance consists of Willowgeist. It is a city that is comprised entirely of elves. It never lets any outside people in unless they have a really good reason to let them in. They're a hunter-gatherer commune that works together and is primarily focused on prefer preserving themselves and their people. At the center of their town is a massive tree which they have carved into and made their homes in. Exemplary. This town is the entertainment capital of the entire world. There are many art museums and many theaters and many other ways to entertain yourself while you are here. 
a very popular place for tourists and a hot spot for religious people who follow Thespia. Concord is a port town that was made when the Alliance was formed. It is where meetings will happen if the Alliance needs to take action, which it rarely does. Otherwise, it's a bustling port town with a lot of people uh, moving in and out of it. Nomengrad is a technological capital of the entire world. They push magic beyond what was ever thought possible for the sake of pushing magic to its absolute extremes to make new things. More interesting things, even. Everything in this city is magical, to its magical moving sidewalks, to the magic power uh, that powers the vehicles that roam the streets, the houses that are magically heated and cooled. Next, we're going to be covering the United Isles. I'm not going through all 22 islands. I'm only going through the ones that have people on it. Wheel of Fortune is a gambling city uh, of the entire world. Uh, people come here to lose money, to have fun, to get drunk, and whatever happens on the wheel stays on the wheel. However, if you rack up a debt, they will track you down and kill you if you don't pay. Lover's Lane is the Red District. You can visit any number of brothels and do all kinds of drugs, and that's basically it. Hierophant is a religious city to the Great Shark. It essentially is one big cathedral with a fishing community to keep it alive. Fool's Open Harbor is like any other port city, except there's very little regulation. Uh, most of the drugs that are smuggled into other countries come from here, as it's totally legal to trade drugs within this port. North Star City is a hot tourist attraction. However, the entire city is lit by what they call heatless fire. It doesn't require fuel, as far as they know, and can be turned on and off with a switch. This city is owned by one family who profits off of the tourism. The World's Rock is very simply put, a toll-gated portal to the Underdark. It's toll-gated by a small family who found the island uh, and now makes people pay if they want to go there. Moon's Isle is a small, self-contained society of lycanthropes uh, that try to support each other and have set up infrastructure for when the full moon happens. It's where you go if you become a werewolf, and the only people who are allowed on there are the lycanthropes themselves and people who knew the lycanthropes before they turned. Justice is the high-security prison for evil mages and other dangerous criminals. All nations utilize this island for their worst criminals. It is nearly impossible to escape, and the only person, and only one person, has ever done it before. The Emperor is the island that the Orcish government operates out of. Only people that work within that police force live there, but those who do live there live there very comfortably until they're called to duty. Thank you for watching that video. If you've watched this, you should have most of the information that you need to make your character. If you still have any questions, feel free to DM me. Um, but uh, you could also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm just saying, it's right down there. You just